Hello, my name is Andres Cuervo, and today's gear review, I'm here with my friend Matthew Hutchins. Hey so. there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Matthew has an interesting project that has now become into a tangible product I think is very useful, very unique, uh, and we're going to talk about it here, reviewing gear. Uh, Matthew, tell me about Hammerhead wheels. So Hammerhead wheels, these are wheels that are uh, used to control a gimbal. Um, but they're also trainers. They started out as trainers uh, to practice on the computer, and then I added functionality to uh, control a Movi or a Ronin. Um, this is a project that came through like different prototypes and iterations, but what is the basic of the wheels and why are they important for an, as a filmmaking tool? I mean, typically now wheels are used to control um, either a geared head, uh, which is like a whole different thing, or our remote had some, you put the camera somewhere like on a car or high up on a crane or, or something like that, where you can't get to it to operate. So you have a remote system that you can use to operate it. Mm -hmm. And so you could use a joystick, but this is another way to operate. So it's like a glorify mouse. It's or... <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the way you can think of it. So yeah, your two axes are separate. So you have an axis for tilt and then you have an axis for pan. Mm -hmm. So I see as you're moving it, the gimbal is responding. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this this can also be changed, I guess, the parameters of how it moves, right? Yeah, you have your sensitivity settings here. So it's at the minimum right now, but now I've just cranked it up. Oh, so, okay. So. Great. So basically, like, these knobs over here control how sensitive the pan and how sensitive the tilt is. Right. And you actually have the readout up here. So right now, this is at 55, this is at 40. Oh, okay, cool. So there's a... This LED screen here uh, kind of helps you to see what are, oh, I can say the values moving. Mm -hmm. And this will be less sensitive. Right? Yeah, exactly. And of course, on the gimbals, like the Ronins, you can go in and adjust some of those things also. So mm -hmm. you can uh, make it more or less responsive. How is this communicating with the gimbal? So on its own, this functions as a trainer. Basically, is made to hook up to a computer. Yep. It takes over mouse functions. You can play games, do applications like that. And it works via USB. Yeah, works via USB. So what I've come up with is this module here, uh, which is a uh, RF module that communicates using a, a RC signal, and mm. um, it goes into the SBUTS input of the Ronin or to or a movie. That's cool that you even have mounting points. In yeah. The bottom. Yeah. Yeah, a little cheese plate so you can mount it. You can actually, there's there's actually a little cheese plate here. So with a with a uh, mount, you can actually mount that on the back like that. If you like, if that is your thing. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Now, initially the wireless module was not part of the design. It was mostly to be hooked on the computer with a USB. And then this is a new uh, addition right, to right. the setup. I mean, I created this basically as a training tool. Not as as a tool to operate the actual game mode. Exactly. But I wanted it to have more functionality, have a longer shelf life. So it's kind of just like a nice introductory level set of wheels that you can practice with smaller gimbals. And and what is the construction? Because I I see that it's, it's not fully metal, but it's also not like plasticky, cheap kind yeah. of thing. So what is the construction of this? Uh, I mean, the wheels themselves are aluminum. The housing is uh, made of PETG, um, uh, plastic, based 3D printed. It's like over-engineered, like you could stand on the... Hmm. the housing and it, it wouldn't crush uh, and then you have metal cheese plates like on the bottom and the side for mounting points so it's a combination of materials and it's also very slick you know it's not not only that it's it looks durable yeah. but it's also very slick with the little hammerhead right here yeah I feel like as a filmmaker we're all about uh, yeah. you now and you know, like things that like feel nice and look nice and so yeah. it's like something nice to have on your desk and play with and uh, you know, st st brush up the skills. And besides controlling a gimbal, what are the other potential uses that this current uh, iteration of the Hammerhead uh, wheels can also operate? So the wheels operate basically like a mouse. So you have, you know, uh, the wheels move the cursor and then you actually have button inputs right here. This this cable goes to two foot pedals, mm -hmm. uh, which are left and right click in this button. So let me just bring you up here yeah. so we can see them. So basically, like, let's see here on camera, this is one of the foot pedals. Mm -hmm. So continuing with using the hammerhead wheels to control the gimbal, because I know uh, 
in, initially the intention was to practice on the software, which we will re review uh, in a bit, but um, you could change also the modes to control this, so you can basically not only control the pan, the tilt, but also the roll. Right? Yeah, this button at the top here um, actually engages the roll, so this mm -hmm. instead of the tilt it becomes the roll. So, you know, it, it's something you obviously you lose your t tilt at the time, mm -hmm. but if you need to make adjustments, you yeah. can set it, go back to... Or maybe some... Or, yeah, or you're moving like yeah. that, you know. Hey, if you want a nice roll for something. Yeah. Yeah. Vertigo shot. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And how hard is it to um, basically change the settings uh, from like roll or tilt or pan? Do, does it work with its own software or how do you control those parameters? Well, as it's set up right now, this is kind of like the standard um, way that the, the, the wheel should work. But if you're someone that likes the wheel to turn in the opposite direction, you can adjust those those things in the software for the, for the gimbal. Okay, so does it only communicate with uh, DJI gimbals or what other gimbals are uh, right able now, to talk to the wheels? I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> right now it works with the Movi also. Oh, cool. And um, I, it, it communicates via S-Bus. So some mm. things like the Cyclo, it can control the Cyclo head. And we're, we're yeah working on seeing what else we can control with it. That's awesome because this is the the utility that it can bring to a setup with the camera. But if you're still not very not trained, you're trying to figure out how this moves. You can also train, and that's when you come up with a software. And I know you have like two pieces of software that you have developed. Tell me a little bit about the process of developing the software. Yeah. All right. So this is my simulator. This is the newer piece of the software, um, and it's still in development. But I've added a lot of functionality to it that's pretty cool it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. a bit of train I'm gonna go ahead and load I like the neighborhood I think your computer should handle it so there's a lot of parameters in the menu you can change and uh, there's also keyframe sequences you can create over here so you could you can create motion paths the way you would like lay down a dolly track mm -hmm. but if you want to just Okay, so the software also controls some of the parameters that you can control with the knobs here. Yeah, yeah. And I like the minimum sensitivity to be a little bit lower than the default, so I mm -hmm. usually change that. And yeah, so then once you're in the world, let's see, now it's very low. <laughs> <laughs> you have control, and then you can map, and then look at what this is mapped. Right now, I can map the forward movement to the, the pedal. Mm-hmm. So now when I hold down that pedal, it moves me forward very fast, too fast. Let's change the movement speed. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm moving, so I'm controlling the wheels, I'm gonna follow this guy for a little bit. Now we gotta leave him. Go and follow this guy. Car's probably gonna be crossing soon. Let's take that turn. Hmm. It almost looks like you're operating in a drone. Yeah, and you could actually control, or you actually have uh, focal lengths to the. Oh, length. cool! Yeah, and of course, like a drone, I could just—I don't have to stay on the ground either. I can go up in the sky. It looks like a game, you know. It's very, very gamified. Oh yeah. Now, can you can you also make it, or maybe it will be in the future? Where you get points as you're <laughs> dragging, and I I haven't looked at that aspect of it, um, but there is another developer who made the uh, Cine Tracer, yeah, Matt Workman, and he's actually working on an op simulator that's that's more like that, more gamified with, um, yeah, points and values based on how you operate. So the the main thing I've worked on with this here, I'm gonna exit here, and I'll show you. Mm -hmm. So this is the sequence. We're just going to create a new sequence. We're going to edit mode. And now, uh, once I hit L, it'll start um, It'll start dropping keyframes. Hmm. So, so it's recording your booping? It's recording the movement now, so I can I can take any path that I like. We're just going to track along here. Take a turn there. Nothing very exciting, really. Uh, start going up high. Movement speed is very low. All right, and then I'm gonna hit L again, and I'll go into playback. 
And now it's going to play back that same movement, but I don't have to be pointed forward anymore. I can point, it, hmm. point the camera in any direction I like. So we're still moving that same path, but now I can I have total freedom to point the camera wherever I like. <laughs> He's gone. He took a turn. Cool. Yeah. Which in this case will be the cameras on a on a crane, for example, is moving independently. From that that movement of the crane is independently of your movement. You're just controlling the camera exactly. as somebody else is operating yeah. the crane. Yeah. And it's kind of like the same feeling here that you're going for. Exactly. The goal is to add more functionality and then also start to add and develop the levels. The levels at this stage are just um, a bunch of things running around and you chase them. Um, the goal is to make some very specific levels for specific things yes, yes. that you can kind of like add on and that that'll be cool to like have challenges that you have to emulate a scene yeah and uh, the closer you are the more points you get yeah. yes. what I like to do is like recreate some like movie scenes where you, oh, like, the action. actual happens as it is in the movie and you can like you know put the camera in different places and yeah. like kind of create it like that but it might be a little way down the road <laughs> yeah but it, it's also I mean yeah. I see the value of Somebody that not only wants to learn how to operate the wheels, but also want to have more special awareness, you know, be more in tune with the movements. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty cool. And the fact that it's not only for training, but that it can also actually work with a gimbal. You can find many ways to have this camera remotely mm -hmm. attached, you know, yeah. uh, at a concert or something. And then you can have the operator right next to the director and then be doing some yeah. of this. What you can do with a joystick or with the phone but this brings just another level of control yeah that you should have a lot more range with this than you would with a phone too yeah you're not depending on bluetooth it's a it's pretty strong mm. rc signal so it's equivalent to like what flying a drone would be and you might be in situations where you don't have wi-fi you can yeah. still communicate and have it yeah so if you can show me the other piece of software that you have let's take a look at the 360 player these are great for playing games and stuff, mm -hmm. but a lot of people weren't that interested in playing games. So I wanted to create something that was more closer to operating. And um, so I came up with the idea of just making a 360 player. Uh, there's, you know, there's 360 videos that you can um, watch on YouTube and stuff, mm -hmm. but you have to click and drag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it doesn't really work well, but the 360 player, you can do a full 360 rotation. Um, so, and you can also like zoom in. So From like real life footage. Yeah, from real life footage, mm -hmm. yeah. So, I, I, yeah, I've generated a lot of stuff with my kids, shot a lot of stuff to play around with, like the bike parts and stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, just try to make di dynamic, interesting moves. But I've, I've worked on some projects where they want to capture 360, not to use it as a 360 video, but almost to reframe within the capture yeah. of all that. Yeah. So it'll be interesting if you enable your software to actually record the movements that you're making. Because now it's almost like you're capturing this sphere. Yeah. And then in post, you can choose where you want to see. Yeah. There's actually um, so, some people reached out to me. They were interested in my project. And um, they, they, they're they helping me develop a way to export the camera movement. Mm -hmm. So basically, it oh. would capture. It wouldn't do like... Like information. Information. So instead of exporting it um, directly from the player, it would... You would you go through your, your, your movements... And it would capture all that camera movement, export. So that it. metadata will be exported to the editing exactly. software. Yeah, you go to Adobe uh, Premiere. Mm -hmm. Not no, not Premiere. Uh, After Effects. Yeah. Um, and then you plug it in After Effects, and it controls your camera, and you can like re-export that video, but you know with nicer quality. Hmm. So yeah, let's see the software in uh, working. There you go. So once your video is loaded, click the top button, and uh, it engages your pan and tilt. It's a little slow. There we go. Cool. So he's now zooming. Yeah, to zoom in. Actually, you know what it is? It's a roller mouse, which... What what doubles this? Oh, there you go. Yeah. So you're zooming out there. Yeah, so you can zoom in and out, reframe it. As you zoom in, you're going to lose quality, you know, but but for practice purposes, it doesn't have to look particularly nice. Yeah, of course. You know? That's cool. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, of course, with this, you can you can do... I mean, yeah, you could do like he did, and I mean, this was an actual shoot, 
but he put his his 360 camera on the same rig and you can go back and you know replay shots you've done and reframe them you know not for use but for practice that's so, cool. so that's yeah it's kind of a fun tool great awesome and it's something that you're still working on that you're still improving that you're still developing but they're officially ready for people to order oh yeah both things you can download right now and play with so is the software uh does the software comes as part of the package is it something that people will have to pay to download differently or is part of their contribution to the process <laughs> it, 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 right now everything is free i i have thoughts of adding levels um mm -hmm. that will help pay for development okay uh with the simulator but for for the for the base package of everything it, everything i've made so far is free yeah yeah that's so cool um And, and how about the wheels? Uh, are, are they available? People can go ahead online and order if they want to start practicing. Yeah, they're available. I make them to order. So usually it's about a two week or at this point it's a two week lead time. I'm trying to minimize that and get ahead, but uh, orders come in faster than I can make them. So That's awesome. I'll make a, a wonderful Christmas present. Yeah. <laughs> no, and I'll leave before Christmas. If you order now, order now, order now. <laughs> and One of the best things, made in America. That's right, made in America. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. In my garage. <laughs> Now, uh, are you able to talk about pricing or is that something that, that you want to structure as it, it grows? Because I know that it has the wireless module and I, I guess you have it in a basic configuration and if you want to have wireless, that's an optional thing. Yeah, I mean, the nice thing about it is it's modular. So you can start with this, you know, if you just want a trainer and then you can add the functionality of the, the module later on. And then the module is something too that that's evolving and it will probably come out with a different module um, to control different things down the road. But we're also working on expanding the functionality of this one, so. Okay, yeah. and, and so you need this wireless, but they, you need something else here to, uh, to communicate wireless with this, right? Yeah, in the case of the smaller gimbals, um, the, the smaller Ronins anyway, Uh, it needs the S bus port, so you just have to add this focus knob, which gives you access to the S bus. Oh yeah, okay. So you and then the USB to to S bus, right? Oh no no no, it's wireless. Sir. It's wireless. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> But it does have uh, a USB port here. Is yes. that what is the USB port for? Because the wheels essentially function. So the interesting thing about this is this will actually allow you to control a gimbal with a mouse as well. Because what it's doing is it's taking mouse input mm -hmm. and translating okay. that into movement for the gimbal. Mm -hmm. So instead of changing what this does, this stays as a trainer, but it takes that trainer information and turns it into gimbal. And if in the future you make some improvements, can those be done at a firmware level or do people have to send their wheels to get upgraded? Uh, how does it work? Yeah, uh, the you can upgrade the firmware. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, Basically, for the same plug. Well, in this one, there's a USB on the side mm -hmm. that that interacts right with a microcontroller that you can upgrade. In this, uh, on the wheels, it's just the same USB plug. You can upgrade the firmware through. Mm -hmm. So I see you have this also. That's the pedals, yeah. Okay, so this this plugs are not USB. It actually like magnetic. <laughs> it actually is USB, but I'm using a cord. That's a, a breakaway magnetic cord. So it's like a MagSafe cable. Cool. And I went with that so that you're not putting wear and tear in your plug. Fancy. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, if it if it peters out at some point, you can just, you know, pull that little adapter out and it's a USB-C port. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Oh, man. Cutting edge technology <laughs> right. right here. <laughs> Mac technology from 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. With pedals. And with, man, it's very awesome, innovative. Thank you for bringing this. Yeah. I know that it's an exclusive uh, <laughs> look at the hammerhead wheels. Uh, again, it's the first look. I think it's the first look. The first look. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I'm really glad. I know that this is going to bring a lot of attention for people, not only that want to train, people that want to also um, incorporate that into virtual experiences. Mm -hmm. It's a way that you can organically navigate, recreate camera movements, give live to maybe people that shot already 360 content and they just don't find a way to preview it otherwise. Uh, so I think it's pretty cool. And um, uh, the accessibility that he has, I know that you know if people have any questions or they can reach out to you, any customer support, they can reach out to you so far. So far. <laughs> <laughs> But th uh, thank you for bringing this. Now, what will be the future plans with some of this gear that you're making? What do you see coming up down the pipe? 
expanding it into uh, virtual production. There's mm -hmm. a lot of application for that, I think, in the future. And then also expanding the what, the wireless module, what it's able to do. And I'm also looking at adding a hardline connection. Okay. Because so sometimes you're in a, in a situation, you, you know, where it's like a big event and, you know, our yeah, wireless signal is the okay. place and, you know, your run's only like, you're only 50 feet away from it. So to be able to do a hard S bus line from it would be good. So, you know, a lot of little features like that. But Awesome. Can't wait to see the integration that you make with uh, different gear and different software. Yeah. Uh, just... Awesome what the future can bring and what focusing your energy into something productive could also yeah. can also bring. So again, if you're interested in the Hammerhead Wheels, all the information will be here and I'll see you in another gear review.